Hi, everybody, and welcome to the show. Today, I'm here with a man who's president of one of the most innovative boat builders going. Their boats have long been known for innovation, design, performance, and excellence in construction. Please welcome Intrepid Powerboats president, Ken Clinton. Hey, how's it going, Kevin? Nice to be here. Good today, Ken. So tell us, how are you helping, uh, continuing to serve your customers and continuing to build boats in these trying times? Well, first and foremost, you know, the safety of our employees is number one. So being able to adapt all our in-house procedures to ensure that safety has been a challenge. You know, first, you have to make sure that we have the social distancing and, you know, split break times and uh, make sure that we're disinfecting everything in between break times and doing different tag outs. Uh, build procedures so people aren't working in the same area. So it's been it's been a challenge, but we're, we're I've got a great team around me, and we've done an excellent job of conforming to that. Luckily, you know we're considered an essential business. I build boats uh, for U.S. Border Patrol and about every municipality throughout the United States there is on the water. So you know we are considered essential, and we're, and we're staying working and being productive. And our employees are really thankful for it. Thanks, Ken. Maybe you could take me through it. Suppose I come, I want to buy an Intrepid. I come to the, and I want to come to the plant with my wife or my girlfriend. How does that actually work in, so with social distancing, as you know, and so, and with these procedures you're talking about? Sure. What we've been doing is we've been having it to where people call ahead and make appointments. Uh, matter of fact, we've even locked our front doors and we have a camera with a push button up front so that we know who's there and we let them in. We have PPE right at the front desk so we can make sure that we can not only disinfect everybody, we have uh, masks for them to wear, gloves for them to wear. And we make sure that we take those procedures, you know, followed by the CDC guidelines. And uh, we've already had several plant tours and everybody that's come through has really been impressed. We were even inspected by the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department that came through and wanted to see our operation, how we were doing. And they told us that we were probably the best operation that they've seen to date. Well, that's good. That's good news. That's good news. So you've got this new boat, the 409 Valor Mercury Racing Powered. Uh, it's up, it's running. It's a, a brand new Intrepid. I, I had a chance to see some preview materials of, of it, which we'll be sharing with the audience here. Tell us about this new boat, Ken. Well, it was a shame because we were planning on debuting it at the Palm Beach Boat Show. And so when that got canceled, we had to kind of reset. And uh, what's nice is we're be able to get it out there doing uh, discussions like this with people like yourself. And the 409 Valor is based off its predecessor, which was the 407 Cuddy. If you look at it from a profile standpoint, the first initial change that you'll see is the uh, new hull side windows with the inset style line, which was a real challenge. We took that from our evolution series and, you know, it's really something that sets the boat off, but it's very difficult to do because those, that, all that shape that happens in that hull side has to happen inside the hull mold, which is a lock and you can't really pull the hull mold of uh, the hull part out of the mold because of those pieces. So. What we have to do is we put all these inserts in, we lay up the hull, then we unbolt all these inserts and pull the hull. And then you have to pull all the inserts out of the hull and then do all the finish work. So though it's a lot of work, I feel aesthetically it's worth it. Right. And just to just to expand for some of uh, for some of our audience who, who may not quite understand what you're saying. Typically, uh, a run of the mill type of boat gets popped, quote unquote, from the mold. And then it goes on, and the deck is put on, and the boat is rigged. The boat is rigged, and the deck is put on, and off it goes. In Intrepid's case, you have a more complex, multi-part mold uh, where inserts are coming out, and then your boats are, of course, hand-finished. You're not just relying on the, qu the quality of your molds, of course, is, is good and great, but you're, you're going beyond that and hand-finishing the boats uh, and the parts uh, after post-mold. Yeah, it, we block everything by hand, and it was funny because anytime I'm designing the next new model, I blocking put it on my blo again. Let's just for our, you know for some sure. of the audience, blocking meaning sanding, fairing, finishing. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. Basically, we take a uh, something that looks similar to a two by four, and we put sandpaper on it, and we literally go back and forth by hand and block. You get all the high spots all blended in before we do an Emron paint job on it. You know, and when we do these new designs, I, I usually I'll put the new vision on a tv in my office and my team comes in throughout the day and we all look at it and we have discussions and you know everybody loved the new design with the inset style line connecting the hull side windows and i reminded everybody i said now remember you all love this as much as i do 
It's going to be a lot of work to make it happen, though, because you can't fit hand tools into any of these areas. So you have to hand finish all that stuff. But, you know, some things are just worth the extra labor to get that look. And, you know, those windows, I mean, in my recollection, in my time covering the industry, you were one of the first, if not the first builder of uh, outboard boats uh, to, or, or boats smaller than yachts to incorporate hull side windows, uh, frameless hull side windows like that. Uh, uh, several other innovations I can think that Intrepid was first to market with might have been like the hull side dive door, which this Valor, uh, this Valor uh, certainly has. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your implementation of the hull side dive door and, and um, what makes it special? Sure. Back in 94, uh, the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Department came here and they met with us and they said that they wanted a rescue door for one of their boats. So we basically built them a, a, a 35 foot boat and took a sawzall and cut the door in it and glassed you know, receivers into it. And we literally did it by hand. 1994. Yeah, 1994. And th that boat is still in service 30 sets of engines later still running for the hillsborough county sheriff and it was funny because we we did that as a one-off project because we do one-off custom things all the time and you know somebody saw it and they said hey you know i'm a diver and i was wondering if you could do that for our boat and you know one thing led to another and now uh throughout all our intrepids there's not one boat that doesn't get a dive door right and it's it's since gone on to become a uh, almost an industry standard in a certain class of boats so it's really uh speaks to the innovation. Um, tell us more about this Valor. I saw the preview video and I'm, we're really excited at Boating Magazine to get aboard the boat, test it, run it. Um, but it has the aesthetic that we've come to see from Intrepids. The boat is is very elegant in, and, and, and looking almost Japanese in the aesthetic when you, you're aboard an Intrepid. It's very clean, yet it's not missing anything. You've integrated all the features uh, and, and technology that we've come to expect but without with a very uncluttered look. Can you speak to how that's achieved, you know, in this boat specifically and in with Intrepids in general? Sure. You know, one of the things that we have that's a benefit compared to everybody else is we build each boat per person. You know, it's not like we build boats that go to a dealer and they get sold and the, you know, the manufacturer doesn't even know who bought the boat until they get a warranty card in the mail. With us, because we build it for each individual person, we have the luxury of sitting with them and getting their input. People ask me all the time about, you know, how do you come up with these designs? And I said, honestly, I'd love to take credit for it, but it's not really us, it's our customers. So a lot of the things that you see implemented, including the stuff that we did to the 409 Valor, are all suggestions from customers that have had boats prior. So when you look down into the cabin and you see all the skylights and you see all the hall side windows, it's because we had feedback many years ago about cabins feeling claustrophobic. You know, when you go down in there, it, it's it's almost tomb like. And when we were started putting those hall side windows in and skylights, it really opened up the market because people were much more comfortable to go down below. In the Valor itself, some of the big changes that we did, you know, as you work your way out of the cabin and you get into the bridge deck area is first thing is a, a fuel reconfiguration we took the fuel which was fore and aft in the boat on center line and we turned it athwart ship so it's port to starboard now and that allowed us to also move it forward changing the center of gravity so when you have a step bottom boat it's all about getting up on plane it's all about transition and it's all about holding that plane at slower speeds so turning the fuel tank athwart ship did a few different things a, it allowed us to move it forward to get the CG further forward so you can have lower planing speeds and get up on plane easier. Then the other thing it allowed us to do is add 56 gallons of fuel. Everybody wants range. Everybody wants to be able to, you know, be able to go as far as they can and get back all in one run. The other thing was it gave us some aft rigging space. The predecessor, the 407 Cuddy, if you wanted to get a gyro, you had to get a helm seat that the gyro would fit within. So it really limited what those choices were. Well, this opened up space underneath the cockpit sole, which now you know eliminated that issue. You can go with any type of helm seat and that gyro stores down below with easy access. And gyro stabilizers have really become uh, uh, a desirable uh, accessory on board boats, almost a standard feature, would you say, or would you say? Yeah, actually, we were the first ones to do an outboard stabilizer with Seakeeper. We did it on a 390 I remember uh, port yacht. And, uh, you know, when they first 
the, the customer came to me and had the request. He said he had a wife that got very seasick and he really wanted the boat. And he said, you know, happy wife, happy life. And it was important that he got that gyro in the boat. And honestly, I really wasn't educated on it whatsoever. And we prototyped the first one with Seakeeper. And uh, since then, it's, it's, you know, an option that more people get than not. So the, so the Valor, just to like get back to specifics. So we have, uh, we have your step bottom. We have triple Mercury racing outboard power. We have uh, two staterooms, I believe. It's full beam master stateroom aft. And then what, is, what are the other accommodations below decks? So what you have, if you start up in the bow section, you have a big wraparound U settee, and there's a high-low electrical table. So you push the button, and this thing goes down. It turns into a filler, which then allows you to have a queen-size berth forward. As you move aft on the port side, there's a head with a separate shower. And on the starboard side, you have a full galley. And then there's a berth aft just behind the companionway threshold. And that's really the full configuration of the cabin down below. That's great. And then top side, the cockpit, we have the helm station. And uh, what, what, again, you, typically your top side cockpit areas are a blank slate for the customer. It is not uh, per se, you, you offer a range of seating and, uh, and, and recreational layouts. Can you expound on that a little bit? Sure. With the, with the 409 Valor, it's got the typical seating forward to the helmsman because, you know, it's really nice being able to have everybody in front of you while you're running the boat. So that way you can be part of the conversation. You're not you know, sitting off all, all by yourself. Uh, the U-shaped seating has a slider that slides out that creates a sun pad, which is really nice. It really takes that forward area and you, makes it a place to hang out. And that's where everybody likes to sit. Plus there's plenty of coverage with the hard top. As you move aft the console, we did the high-low mechanism for those who are shorter or taller, depending on who's at the helm. And how I really came up with that was I was getting requests over the years for step boxes. You know, in, I would have a husband say that he's tall and his wife was shorter. And when she ran the boat, they wanted to make sure that she could have the best visibility possible. So then I started making these custom step boxes. Then you got to figure out how to detach them quickly. Where do you store them? So I knew that there had to be a better way. So I wanted to go after making a high-low mechanism that at the push of a button gives you five inches of range and it just lifts the cockpit sole to, to give you what you need with just the push of a button and not having to mechanically have a box that you connect or disconnect and then have to stow. That's great. Before we move on to some other boats and some other things happening with Intrepid Power Boats, if you had to pick one feature, and I know you have many, you had to pick something that you're particularly proud of aboard that 409 uh, Valor. Can you, can you identify one particular feature? Um, I think the hull. I mean, the biggest thing is being able to have a boat that performs well. I get requests all the time from people. Can you add a fourth engine? Can you add a fifth engine? That seems to be something that you see across many different manufacturers out there. And I always stress back to them that, you know, I'm more about hull performance than I am just bolting another engine on the back. I think it's almost like a Band-Aid. I, I joke with people and I say, you know, you can put five engines on the back of a fire truck and push it through the water. I would much rather work harder on a better, more efficient hull design and not have to have more engines and still get the same performance. You know, you're looking at a 409 Valor with the triple 450 package that runs 68 miles an hour. Well, that's that's great. So in the, in the last year, um, in, uh, according to my notes, you've produced uh, nine new models in the past 12 months um, for the first time ever. And that's prior to the new 409 and the new upcoming 438. So you've got a completely revamped lineup. Is that correct? Yeah, we, we have everything that's been revamped. It's been it's been quite the feat. We've never done it before, but it was really nice having some investors that are behind me that don't want me to let my foot off the gas and, and they love the innovation and our customers have really just ate it up. You know, everything that we've come out with is based on customer input and uh, it, it's been it's been great. You know, they, it's been accepted by everybody and uh everybody who's been getting delivery of the new boats absolutely loves them well that's good news ken we're glad to hear that so the, the 409 valor is out and ready and then we have in prototype apparently you have in prototype the 438 evolution tell us a little bit about that boat and where you project that to fit in the market and what what buyer is that for who buys that boat 
So the 438 evolution is going to fall within our evolution series, which is boats of 41 or higher in length, which is our 41 evolution, our 410, and also the 477 evolution, which we came out with uh, last year. So the 438 is right in between. So when you look at the 477 evolution, that's a two stateroom boat with a full settee forward inside the cabin, whereas the 438 is a single stateroom that has a full settee forward that converts into a queen. So it's one size below the 477 evolution. And, you know, we have people that they're a single cup. They're just a couple with a couple kids. So they, they don't need two separate staterooms and the queen forward. So this is a, a sweet spot right between the 410 and the 477. Well, that's great. We'll look forward to seeing that boat as well. Um, Ken, let me ask you, uh, let me ask you this. Um, another thing that sets Intrepid apart in the marketplace is that if I buy an Intrepid, I have a choice of, of propulsion. I can get Mercury outboards. I can get outboards from what other, uh, Yamaha, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Suzuki. I believe you, you basically will sell me a boat with whatever engines I prefer on it. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. We'll do anything from Suzuki to Seven Marine to Yamaha's, Mercury, Honda, Evinrude. Wait. Whatever the customer wants, that's what we're about. We're about building individual boats for individual customers the way that they use the boat. Okay. Well, you know, I think, um, is there anything else you'd like to add uh, about the new boats, about in where Intrepid is and where it's going before we conclude? I think the biggest thing is, you know, once we get back to the 409 Valley, we talk a little bit about the aft part of that boat. You know, we've also added some uh, above deck bait wells with windows in it so the boat's very fishable um the reconfiguration of fuel with the gyro going down below you know the rigging access has gotten even better with this new configuration these are all things that customers have asked us for even right down to we've added side steps similar to what we would do on our walk around model to the new valor because customers wanted better cockpit, access cockpit step i'm sorry I'm not sure. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Is that, did you mean uh, saying steps to get out of the cockpit? What are side steps? So the, just like a, a walk around version would have steps to go up to a walkway to do, to walk around the perimeter of the deck. We've added okay. that to the Valor because the, the 407 there was a, a cutty, you know, and a cutty and a walk around are, are different in the sense that the access to the bow is different. So we've added these steps because they really enjoy having that access, that easy access up to the bow. And we were able to do it without making it necessarily look like a walk around. You know, there's like a stigma with the name walk around that it's almost like a station wagon, you know, whereas a cutty is more sleek and sexy. Well, we figured out a way to be able to give you the same uh, ease of use that you would get from a walk around with the same sexy, sleek look of a cutty. Ken Clinton, president of Intrepid Powerboats. Thank you for your time today. Thanks, Kevin. Nice being with you. We're here at the factory. I have the 409 Valor out front. Why don't we go take a walk through and I'll show you our newest boat. Kevin and I just gave you some of the highlights of the new 409 Valor, but let's get out there on the real thing and take a closer look. This is based on its predecessor, the 407 Cuddy, and we've done a bunch of new upgrades and design changes based on your suggestions because our best designers are our customers. Let's start with the hull. First, we've got our 22 and a half degree dead rise transom and we've upgraded all of our trim tabs to the Lavorsi High Performance Rams. They're 22 by 12 inch. You'll really see a difference from the old tab system that we had prior. So let's talk about engine packages. The 409 Valor really likes this setup that we have here today. 450 triple racing motors, top speed of 68. They're also custom painted to match the hull sides. We can make it any way that you want it. As we move towards the bow, you'll see that this is our patented step design which does a few different things. This is a vent that allows to break the suction. So when you get ready to get up on plane, it pops up nice and it holds transition, very fuel efficient as well. As we move forward, you'll also see the biggest change with this update, which is our new evolution style hull side windows with this inset style line, which is an extreme amount of work. We make special tooling to allow all this to happen in the hull and just some things are worth all the extra work and we think that this is beautiful and it's worth the labor to do it. Let's go take a look up inside. So let's start at the bow. What you'll see on the new 409 Valor 
is very clean four deck, windless, road, wash down, all underneath with foot switches. Euro style pop up cleats. And plenty of room for sun deck cushions up forward to here on the bow. All right, let's go below down in the cabin. As you can see in the cabin of the 49 Valor, there's plenty of headroom. I'm six foot two, and there's still plenty of room down here. As you look forward, you'll see that there's a large U shaped settee, and there's also a high low table which lowers down to create a berth forward. So now with the table in the down position and the fillers in place, you'll see that it makes a secondary queen size berth. Here we have the galley, solid surface countertops, refrigerator, stove top, sink with filling cutting board, AC panel, hanging locker, lots of storage, including a microwave. Over on the port side, you'll see that we have a full size head with separate shower. Plenty of room here to get ready for the day with storage and a medicine cabinet. In the aft section of the cabin is the other main queen berth. One of the changes that we did in the new 409 Valor is now there's hull side windows on both sides, which lets a lot of natural light in. It's really nice. In the bow section of the cabin of the 409 Valor, this large U-shaped settee that turns into the queen size lounge will sit six to eight people easily. Then you've got the hull side windows and all the skylights above, which let lots of natural light in. And don't forget, you can never have enough room for storage. So we give you the overhead storage here in the bow. Let's jump up into the bridge deck area. So the other thing that we're famous for is all this seating up here in the forward cockpit. It's nice because it's forward to the helms person. They could take part of the conversation. It also has a pull out sun pad here, which is really nice. Gives you a place to lay out. Then over on the port side, we have a set of seating as here as well. And as we move aft, we have the cooler which is very convenient for everybody in the forward and aft cockpit. The other thing that we do is we custom paint about everything that you could want on the boat. Anything from the engines to the underside of the hardtop to match the hull sides. Moving aft, we get to the console. You'll see that there's plenty of room for even the largest of electronics. It's got our patented high-low cockpit sole, which is really nice. You can just lift this up and it gives you even better visibility depending on your height. Because we believe that you can never have enough room for storage, we make sure that everything is accessible. Even the aft-facing seat has storage underneath. So one of the other big changes that we did in the 409 Valor is we changed the fuel configuration which also changed the CG or what we call the center of gravity. The fuel tank before ran fore and aft, now runs a thwart ship. So it runs across that forward area which helps with a few things. Helps with transition when the boat gets up on plane and it helps the boat run on plane at slower speed. With the reconfiguration of the fuel tank, we were able to change the capacity and get another 50 gallons of fuel to extend your range. We also made some room underneath the cockpit sole. That, in turn, allowed us to get the Sea Keeper gyro, if so optioned, to go underneath the cockpit sole, whereas on the old 407 Cuddy, it always had to go underneath the helm seat. So now with the gyro underneath the cockpit sole, you can choose any helm seat that you want. This particular dual pedestal, with racing bolster, fore and aft powered, up and down powered, ergonomically puts you exactly where you need to be. One of the other changes that we did on the 409 Cuddy is we built in these walk around steps that allow you easy access to the bow. As we move aft, we've got our traditional swing in dive door. And the other big change that we have on the 409 is the aft port and starboard above deck live wells. They're 30 gallon wells, pressurized with a sea chest system, really works well. Even down to the smallest thing, the details are important to us. Like even these cleats, Euro style, pop up, very clean. On center, we have our folding rear seat, 
which is real nice because it gives you the angle that you want when you're sitting at the transom. And if you go fishing, it's just as easy as folding this away and it reveals the new rod holder rack that we have in the motor well. So I want to thank everybody for checking out the new 409 Valor on our new virtual event. This is the first time we've ever done it. You know, we're excited for you to see it in person. This is a boat that you can fish, dive, cruise, day boat, stay boat, you name it, you can do it. Now I'm going to turn it over to Alex Grizzo and he's going to take you through the 407 Nomad FE. Thanks. Hey everyone, my name is Alex Rizzo, Vice President of Sales, and I'd like to welcome everybody to Intrepid's first live virtual event. Ken just walked you through the 409 Valor, and I will be walking you through the 407 Nomad FE. This is a very unique opportunity with both of these boats available right now for immediate delivery. Let's go take a look at the 407 Nomad. So here we have our 407 Nomad FE. And uh, this boat is built on our legendary 40-foot platform, which is one of our best running hulls of all time for Intrepid. This particular boat is powered with 450 horsepower Mercury engines. Again, as you already know, you can outfit the boat with any power uh, choice that you want. If you walk over here, you can see that this is an outside shot of our legendary dive door that folds into the hull. So now let's step up inside and look at the inside of this beautiful boat. Well, as we walk through the dive door, might as well start here. Uh, the dive door, as you see, completely, when you lift the dive door, it completely hides out of the way and gives you all the room. And under this hatch, is our dive ladder that stays attached to the boat and folds directly down into the water. Very convenient. You know, the advantages of this dive door over the fold down one into the water is when you pull up to a uh, restaurant or a floating dock or even your mega yacht, you can open the door and step right on off to the dock. And that ladder is very convenient to give you the same access uh, into the boat from the water. As we come a little further back, this model has these two integrated aft bait well slash storage compartments that could be turned into bait wells with windows. There are 40 gallons of water, which is plenty for holding bait and any type of fishing. We have our folding rear seat, which is incredibly comfortable to sit. It's just the right height for the right, the right knee roll and comfort. These compartments back here will give you access to the lazarette area and pumps. With this Ocean Elite helm seat, which is a, one of our more popular helm seats, and we do have other helm seat options available, you have the option of this frigid, rigid cooler that slides out and it's very convenient because it's completely out of the way. If you come forward in this helm seat, you can see it has these built-in reclining bolsters for a, a lot of convenience uh, standing when you're driving the boat. And we also have this platform, which has this built-in step hydraulically, which gives you an additional four and a half inches of height. The console area was built with room enough for any and all electronics available nowadays in sizes as everybody likes to add their uh, 22, 20 inch screens and this has the real estate for uh, to accommodate those screens. As you come forward to the bow area, first you reach the, uh, the reason this boat is called an FE is because of the front entry to the head area. Push button slides it away and there's a roomy head area there with a sink, shower, the bottom of this seat has an insulated cooler incorporated into it. And now we reach the very interesting part of this boat, which is this sun pad lounger, which first I'm gonna open it up 
so that you can see inside. There's plenty of room for storage. You can turn it into a fish box. You can turn it into anything you would like. You can use it for ice. You could use it for fish. You could use it for storage. I mean, it's extremely practical. And then you can recline the backrest for the most comfortable ride in the entire boat. Here on the port and side gunnels, you have an extremely large storage, additional storage capacity for fenders or any kind of gear. As we come forward, we have the forward seating and table, and the table recesses down, which I'll show you now, but the forward seating has reclining backrests and also has additional storage underneath and as we come to this side we'll place this table down in the down position so you can see that you have the comfort of the table but you also can get the table completely out of the way for fishing or for just additional room or you can even hold the table in the middle position and have an additional sun pad so here's a great look at a beautiful 407 nomad fe with a lot of options and features i mean this is not your typical center console boat this is a boat that offers an enormous amount of luxury comfort and at the same time fishability so up next we'll have mark talk to you about our online owner's manuals and after that we'll follow up with some q a Hi, I'm Joe Brennan, Vice President of Customer Support at Intrepid Power Boats. Today we'll be introducing you to our 407 Nomad. This is the front entry version of this model and we'll be doing a video owner's manual. It's important to keep in mind that this video is an overview. For maximum enjoyment and safe operation of your 407 Nomad, we highly suggest watching this video and doing an in-depth study of the information supplied in your owner's packet. We hope this will be a great tool to help you operate and safely enjoy your new Intrepid. We're located here in our main sales office in Dania Beach, Florida, just south of Fort Lauderdale. At this time, I'd like to introduce every one of our sales team members. Also, last but not least, the legendary Michael Bolsky, which is not here with us today, but definitely a big part of this team. When you have a chance, please come by and visit us here at the sales office or book an appointment for a private showing or a virtual showing. With everything happening in the world right now, there is no better time to be out in the water with your family and friends on an Intrepid.
So be sure to check out our new website where you can go online, build your boat there, and here we'll make it all come to life. So here's a question. Did someone start cloning human beings and forget to tell us? Do we all have a sign over our heads that says, I'm like everyone else, so feel free to treat me like I am? Not true? Well, then why are so many companies building boats like it is? There's too much of this, too much of that, way too much of this. Is the notion of custom made being buried under an unstoppable wave of conformity? Well, not if we have something to say about it. Since we started, we've built boats the way they should be built. Not the way they could be built. You see, to us, it's not about making a boat that raises profit margins. It's about making the kind that drops jaws. It's not just choosing a model. It's building the one residing in your imagination. It's not about following what others are doing. It's leading the way with stuff like this. And this. Yep, this too. And, oh yeah, there's that. So until someone on this big blue planet of ours can prove to us that we are all the same, we'll hold true to our belief that we aren't and keep building boats that honor every last quirk and idiosyncrasy inside each of us. And that's why we build boats that are one of a kind and why we do it one 